This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Eki Gamble. Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back again. And uh, hello, Leon, of course. Hello there. Hey, uh, can you believe it? Last time we sat here and said, whoa, we got snow right here in Hanover. Haven't seen that for so long. And it's still snowing. <laughs> no, it's uh, again. Uh, actually, every, all the snow vanished in, in the meantime. And then it ca- ca- came back strongly with this heavy, heavy fr- oh, yeah. frost and everything. And ev- everything broke down even more than before. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, but it is beautiful, and um, I'm hearing that in one week from now it's going to be 20 degrees Celsius plus. So. plus. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, yeah, today we do have a uh, very cool interview on the technical, on the IT side, rather. Yeah. Um, that's uh, with my good friend uh, Jordan Ryan on, on the topic of Kubernetes. That is something. Uh, related to how can I make a Mordic hosting environment really powerful and, and mm-hmm. uh, high availability, high performance, uh, multi-tier, etc. Um, yeah, so um, that in a minute, it, it's good stuff. Do listen to it. It's oh, not yeah. too technical. It's really about the, the relevant part for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we go there, I... Uh, have a little anecdote and oh. that is, <laughs> i've been using modic for quite a while now but i was completely unaware of the fact that there are keyboard shortcuts oh and there are yeah, there are and uh, for some reason I, th- I think lamin told me mm-hmm. uh turns out when you hit the shift question mark it, it actually shows you what the shortcuts are it's not too many of them and um some of them are quite helpful in my personal workflow some not super relevant and maybe there's there's room for more in the future but the fact that we have shortcuts <laughs> completely yeah. took me by surprise same <laughs> so if you haven't heard of it i put it in the show notes for starters <laughs> <laughs> okay and then um we have a little bit of hint for messaging right yeah i've been strolling through the forum and it popped up once again the old question is it able to send um modic messages to whatsapp because um, it is kind of yeah popping off often and there's confusion about that so you can send modic messages to whatsapp but you do not necessarily need the twilio plugin but the webhook connected to twilio and your twilio account it's kind of complex and um, there's a pretty good article in the forum about that how to do that pretty easily and we will link that in the show notes if you're interested in that give it a uh, give it a read it's pretty simple to set up yourself yeah i don't even think it's it's complex by nature it's just well hidden because every, everybody thinks you need the twilio plugin yeah. but all you need is the twilio service and the regular webhook so give it a shot right yeah the other thing uh that's coming up is our shopware shopware integration mm-hmm. we did talk about it a uh, couple of episodes oh, ago yeah. that we intend to do such a thing and we do have a forum post on this uh, shopware six integration with mordic uh time is approaching that we're going to kick it off as a project and as a plugin yeah. uh so if you have any input for us if you have any wishes that we you want to see in that integration do go to the forum post which you will also find in the show notes yeah and then we're coming to the feature request of the week i heard you wanted to tell us about that yeah it's um it's been a while before mm-hmm. uh, since we had a, a feature request ourselves but we're looking at the feature requests in the forum time and again and there's one that is bugging me all the time <laughs> uh not the request, but the missing feature. And that is when you do import or export of Mordic in, in uh, Mordic context through CSV or whatever, that's a powerful thing and, and really handy. But it does not uh, consider tags and also stages. Uh, so there's no way to import, to easily import directly, including tags and stuff like that. And uh, same for, for export. No. And... If if you ever try to do more than a just simple contact list, then you will have stumbled across that. And um, so, if you feel the same, 
If nothing else, do give a thumbs up or a vote for this feature request, and I hope we're going to see it soon in our good I old hope morning. So too, yeah. yeah. Good. And then we go back to another old oldish thing, um, and that is keeping your uh, Mordic instance and Mordic database uh, lean and mean. Yeah. Uh, so keeping it in good shape, prevent it from blowing up, from, from, from collecting all the bloat and going up to the 100 megabyte size <laughs> with, with just 99% crap in it. Um, so we, we did uh, do a knowledge base uh, article quite a while ago about uh, housekeeping for the Mordic database yep. and that was about onboard things um, or out of the box things like, like the good old Mordic maintenance cleanup command which you should be aware of if you mm -hmm. run a Mordic instance uh, but also how to create a custom compa campaign to do even more intelligent cleanup. Yeah. Then there are other things uh, that cannot be uh, dealt with out of the box. Mm -hmm. And um, as of today, things may require a database command to do that. Oh. Especially the event log can grow large. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pointing you to a forum post or forum discussion uh, with the proper SQL commands and everything yep. um, to do that. However, if you are not familiar with with the with dealing directly with the database, the regular disclaimer applies: don't do it. Don't try this at home. <laughs> it's more dangerous and helpful. So rather give a little bit extra storage size to your database. And there's one more thing that I want to remind people of, and that is another uh, console command. And when I say console command, that also means it can be a cron job, of course. Uh, again, for those who are not too technical, it's probably nothing that you want to do yourself. Yep. It's just like set setting up other cron jobs or dealing on the, on the command line of your server. Um, and the command, what it does is deduplicate. And, and that is... Uh, dealing with a specific thing that people see and that is not too uncommon and that is that you have multiple entries say with the same email address or other things that are supposed to be unique and so what it does is, is deduplication um, and uh, merge all those duplicate entries into a single one and of course uh, the name of the command is deduplicate or rather modic contacts deduplicate how convenient <laughs> isn't it and it's not very well known uh, just as many other cron job or com console com commands out there are helpful but but not uh, uh, everybody's aware of them yeah, it's super hidden in the documentation for no, example no no not at all. yeah well Kind of okay. You're yeah. right. You're There's, right. There are some which are yeah hard to find. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then there's so many lists out there, and the most do not really explain um, what they do. Maybe maybe we should make it a, a regular uh, yeah. chapter in, in the podcast to talk about one specific console, console command, yeah, maybe. command of the week. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, we're not really do this <laughs> weekly but <laughs> okay let's say feature console command of the podcast episode Perfect. blah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah but let's let's yeah let's look out for, for more yeah, good point okay um let's move on to the interview with jordan ryan you probably heard of the name uh at least it's a good old friend of mine and he's very well known in the mordic community especially sure, in yeah. the u.s yeah. um and for instance, in the last Morticon, uh, it was to me it was one of the highlights where we had Jordan in a panel discussion about Mordic HA high availability, yeah. uh, which was much more than HA, <laughs> <laughs> and certainly worth a look. But uh, today we wanted to discuss a, an even more specific uh, topic, and that is Mordic on Kubernetes, something that Jordan and his team has been working on for quite a while and we have uh, planned to make this uh, interview for quite a while and now that uh, Jordan is, is finally releasing this oh. to the public thank yeah. you so much Jordan uh, I think it's the right time to uh, talk about it but more in detail here we go okay welcome Jordan welcome to the show I appreciate your time thanks Aki I'm glad to be here 
joining you finally on the Modicast. Yeah, I've been hoping to have you for quite a while. And you've been a long-time high-profile community member, obviously. And many have known you for a long time. Others may have seen you at Mordicon. Um, and if, if you haven't, um, scroll back to, to last year and, and look, at, look it up at, at YouTube. It's really worth it. For everybody else, um, please do give us a little bit of background about yourself, about what you do with Mordic and, and all that just for a start. Sure. Uh, thank you. I uh, First, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jordan Ryan. I'm CTO at Facet Interactive. We are a Los Angeles-based um, and distributed at this point digital strategy agency, primarily focusing on uh, uh, empowering people with uh, business-managed solutions across their marketing stack, their web technology stack, and IT stacks. Uh, our work in Modic started um, four to five years ago. I was looking at some old commits <laughs> just to just to date this a little bit back in 2016. So it's been a, a long time that we've been in the community. We've we've been on again, off again uh, members. More recently, as more uh, enterprise interest has uh, grown in the Modic community, we've become more involved again as some customers have. Um, rekindled their interest and reached out to us. And uh, we're very excited to be participating now in a very visible way, particularly around this Kubernetes hosting um, and Helm chart implementation that I'm excited to be talking about a little bit today. Yeah, sounds like, like a perfect match with your IT and infrastructure background, uh, Kubernetes experience, and Mordic at the same time. Yeah, um, it's... It's very much a uh, blend in this day and age, right? You can't have success without knowledge about how marketing works, and you can't have marketing success without knowledge about how technology works. So you, most, you really need both. You have to work with partners, and, and in this case, it all comes together. So let's get going. Uh, let's start off with, with the basics, because not everybody is aware of what we're talking about here. So what is Kubernetes in a nutshell and, and who should care about it in, in our modic context? What benefit does it bring, et cetera, et cetera? Um, can, you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so Kubernetes is an open source management platform for hosting containerized workloads. If that sounds like a lot, it is. But essentially for any kind of uh, larger deployment of a web application or a software, uh, most companies will consider deploying that so they have redundancy or failover. And a system like Kubernetes makes that really easy because it's all managed by the Kubernetes cluster where there is a manifest, really like at a recipe or an instruction that can explain uh, to itself if this virtual server, this container fails, redeploy it. And um, that kind of redundancy and management and failover has, you know, historically been difficult. There are certainly other containerized management platforms out there besides Kubernetes, but, you know, we're no longer really managing directly, uh, directly managing servers. We're managing these containers in lots of cases. So companies that are using Modic for their marketing, um, you know, it, it really is important to underline here if you're already considering Kubernetes for other applications and Modic making, you know, makes a lot of sense. If you are not jumping into the Kubernetes um, world entirely for all of your systems, then it might make sense to bring an outside specialist to help you. Okay, let's get a, just a little bit more technical before we go back to the, the big picture. Um, what does a typical tech stack or Kubernetes setup look like and, and what components are involved? Sure, so I, I won't get into you know which Kubernetes backplane you should use or anything like that. There's plenty of options, but... Um, We've been working with our Helm chart in a particular way to deploy onto AWS EKS with a uh, Nginx ingress in order to route traffic. P2 
PHP FPM application containers, uh, an Nginx proxy for each of those containers that handles the requests locally. And then that we have an optional in cluster MySQL server, or in our case, we like to push all of our responsibility for the database out to RDS for the relational data service. Um, and then uh, RabbitMQ for queuing all of the inbound traffic requests, all the page views and um, uh, requests that get queued before they get processed asynchronously by Modic. And lastly, Redis for the shared PHP sessions. Um, I am excited though. There is a new feature that I think has not yet been released, which is a new cache bin for Redis in Modic 3. Uh, I believe that has not yet been merged, but I've been keeping my eye on that one for about six months now. So um, hoping to use that Redis Redis cache yeah. a little bit more. Excellent. So so it's it's all really mainstream mainstream technology that it's built on. Yeah, definitely. We're we're you know we're using the most recent versions of PHP for the most part. I believe that uh, we're currently running PHP seven three, so we're behind by one to PHP seven four. But we won't get that until we uh, personally upgrade to Modic three. We're currently running um, this on Modic two, but uh, Modic three is definitely uh, on the horizon for us this quarter because. As you know, we you know we're not seeing any more uh, security updates or any kind of updates to Modic two in the community. That's right. Yeah, yeah. While while we at it, um, what we what you described before was was a Kubernetes setup in general, mm -hmm. and then then you already hooked into uh, what it is does it take for Modic to run into in, in that context. So if I take just a vanilla Modic that doesn't make much sense does it or can you explain what, what it takes sure so I can, talk, I can talk a little bit about the challenges the challenges are the 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 main problem here so the challenges of modic are the way that the configuration is managed in modic um it's you know technically it's stateful and what i mean by stateful is that when you write your configuration file, which is your local.php file in your app config folder for the technical folks that are following us, that is um, required by Modic to be writable. And when you make that required to be writable, you have to put it in a place that it can be written to um, by all the application containers. And so this is essentially the, you know, the work of the recipe is that we want this data to be accessible by all the app application servers for anything that needs to be writable. So if it's your media folder and your files and your images it needs to be writable, if it's your cache, it needs to be writable in a shared directory. Um, if it's your logs, it needs to be writable in a shared directory. Um, and all of those things contribute towards um, kind of the, the portholes that need to be poked in the application server to make sure that everything's woven together. Mm -hmm. um, as for um, you know running vanilla modic, it's not that you can't run vanilla modic. It's that um, managing it in this cluster is going to become very difficult at some point. We currently use Composer to do all of our installs in a kind of a specialized way inspired by um, Heath Dutton and the DMS group's work in um, modic elastic beanstalk. And we have a, you know, the need to make the modic application, well, destroyable. We need to make it, we need to make the application server that's running it restartable. And in order to do that, that means that no data can be um, written locally to the application server. So you have to have those mounts, uh, those persistent volume caches, as they're called in Kubernetes land. Um, so that the data between these application servers can continue to persist and we can restart servers without causing Modic to actually stop functioning. Uh, that's the majority of the work that we've done. Uh, there's no really other special vanilla 
patches, if you will. Modic, Modic Core is usable. Um, we do have a few patches that we've run because we just stay up to date in the community and um, you know contribute patches and, and want to make sure that we, we are keeping an eye on uh, performance improvements and other things that maybe aren't in Modic Core, but those are all optional at this point. Okay, and when, when you say we did this, we did that, I know you did a lot of work over the last couple of months, and you told me you're making all this public. So what, what's the state of that? Yeah, so uh, by the time you're hearing this at home, uh, Modic Kubernetes, Modic KS is going to be open source. Uh, as of this podcast, I'm just finalizing some of the documentation, you know, telling people what kinds of variables they need to set up in their GitLab CI pipeline and um, making it uh, hopefully as easy of an on-ramp as possible. Uh, to tell you about how long we've kind of been working on this, we started this work back in January of last year, and it's been a fair weather project for us. I'm not going to say that we were working 100% of the time on it, um, but uh, we've been running our mod at Kubernetes instance for about that long and working through some of the uh, scalability issues and testing it in different ways. Um, and certainly there's a lot more work to be done to make this a better tool for everyone, but we're ready to tear off the Band-Aid and show people how they can help. So um, I'm excited about that. Yeah, sounds like it has matured a little bit, a little bit already. It's been running that long. Yeah, it's definitely been a process of encountering different kinds of errors as we've, in, you know, worked through the stateful issues and the stateless issues, mm -hmm. and it's also been a matter of um, putting it under load in real conditions and and making sure that we have the time to work through the issues of how do we upgrade from one version of Modic to the next. Those might seem like simple um, problems to solve. However, getting those deployment steps correct so that when you're deploying to a high availability cluster is different than just downloading the upgraded script and up running the package. It's very different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in the Modic Slack, we now have a, a channel for Kubernetes, and uh, there's a lot of people in it already. And I think you are the first one to really publish what, what, what you did and inviting other people to, to use it and to contribute and, and to, to collaborate or whatever. Um, are, are you actively working with anybody outside of your team already, or do you, what, what is it? process for them to get in touch we are we are actively working with some other um not contributors in the modic open source community but contributors that um are close friends of ours that have been kind of along with us in this modic journey um we primarily have had a background in drupal and so know a lot of other drupal agencies and they've been uh, most interested in our journey and we've been uh, kind of shepherds for them um showing them the way as well we have a uh, keen interest though for you know a, a list of about a half dozen to you know a dozen uh, individuals that have reached out to us that I'm very excited to reach back out to them this week and say hey it's up it's not perfect but it you know it will be with your help and we have this list of things that we know uh, need to be addressed if you want to address them we'd love to have your help if you have your own ideas we want to hear them Wow, perfect. Um, well, I, I would imagine, I mean, I, I know that other uh, others have been tackling this this issue or this challenge um, too in, in the in the past, and not sure where everybody is. But but I would I would think for Mordic it would be best if there is one standard way of, of doing Kubernetes with Mordic going forward, and. Um, so, from my point of view, one one vision would be that that now that we have one open source project for this, that this that everybody is is eventually going to move over to that and then to contribute to that, etc. So we have a gold standard uh, for for doing it with Mordic. But um, 
I'm not sure where we are in, in that respect, and um, I, I'm not sure what your vision is either. I, I would love to see one modic Kubernetes Helm chart and distribution for handling modic on Kubernetes. I think that that is entirely the goal. Whether or not we will get um, rogue implementations where somebody did something differently because they they did not find the project or they went ahead and did something themselves because they didn't want uh, maybe all of the additional opinionated ways that we have at Facet provided ways to manage the Kubernetes instance or manage the Modic instance, I should say. Um, there's certainly people who are going to want leaner implementations, I think. Uh, or maybe they want to run Apache instead of Nginx. Um, we can certainly provide different forks within the, within the project, but those are the kinds of opinionated things that I think lead to this you know, kind of difference of opinion. Um, I, I know that Modic Docker, for instance, supports a wide variety of different um, uh, hosting environments, but uh, it'll, it will take time for us to get there. <laughs> But that's fine. You need to start somewhere and you need to make decisions and trade-offs in the beginning and then work from there. So that's that's okay. Um, to be a little bit more specific, um, if anybody out there is interested in, in using what you have, where would they find it? And uh, who should they talk to, interact with? What kind of questions should they contact you or... or uh, a, a forum or where should they go? Sure. Uh, a few different ways to get involved. One is definitely go to github.com slash facet interactive slash modic dash K8S. And um, you can start the project, you can fork it, you can open an issue. Um, if you would like to get started, Certainly reading the documentation will help. And by all means, if you can help with any kind of questions around that documentation, we will be all about getting some uh, improvements there to help people get onboarded. If you have questions while you're getting started, uh, please join us in the Modic Slack community on the hashtag Kubernetes channel. Um, you can also reach out to me on Twitter at, at Jordan underscore Ryan. Um, and I'm also at Jordan Ryan on Modic Slack. So if you want to just DM me, that's perfectly fine. Okay. And uh, Facet Interactive can be found at? You can find us at facetinteractive.com. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Modic Kubernetes people join forces. And uh, um, I think it's, it's fantastic that we now have something tangible and, and something that everybody can can discuss and, and make better and so that's a uh, next level for the kubernetes uh, community and the slack channel um so yeah everybody get going i can't wait to uh, to see a lot of discussion and eventually uh, installations and improvements etc happening and frankly i can't wait to have something like that in our own agency. Um, it's not the stack that we normally do, but it's certainly something that we want to start doing. So we, I, uh, we'll be part of the team eventually. Yeah, it's it's an opportunity to grow for a lot of agencies to get into Kubernetes. I, I feel the same as you, Eki. We've, we've definitely grown a lot over the past year and a half, two years, as we've uh, dipped our toes into this space and, and driven this forward. Excellent. So um, thank you so much, Jordan, for all these insights, for, for huge contribution to the Mordic community and for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Mackie. Okay, and um, I talk to you soon. I hope uh, you can show us a little bit at, at Mordicon 2021. And uh, until Is then, that just around the just corner around yet? The corner. <laughs> yeah, listen to the next podcast. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. Right to this one, actually. Um, yeah, it's it's happening in, in June. Perfect. Yeah, isn't it? Okay, no, take care, stay safe, talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jordan, for sharing that knowledge with the public. But the question that comes to mind, um, to my mind, is uh, do we at Leuchtfeuer <laughs> will use that? Oh, I was afraid of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, 
<laughs> I mean, we've been doing HA for for a long time now, even mm -hmm. longer than Mordic. And so we, we have our traditional technologies and specs, yeah. and we're evolving on that, of course. And Kubernetes is not on that list yet. But yeah. but after this interview, oh. I can't wait to, to really do it. Problem is, of course, if you have something that works well, um, and you have a complete overload situation anyway, so mm -hmm. you don't have enough engineers and everything, uh, it's always going to be pushed back. So, so we're trying hard to find uh, find time to and uh, advance on that. But, but uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm not making promises. I, I hope we'll have it real soon. But, but uh, I, I'd love to. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, what else do we have? Yeah, we now have a bounty program. There also is an article in the forum about that. But I think you know a bit more concerning that topic. Yeah, it's actually a full blog post, oh. um, and it's explaining what we mean by it, uh, and basically how we are going to use money or, or to deal with money in order to make Modic better and more successful. Mm -hmm. And we, we do have a little bit of money uh, because of incomes, like like uh, sponsorships, etc. Yep. It is probably hopefully growing over time but we don't we never talked about what do we do with the money and and the other thing is there's when we, and, and we talked did talk about this in the show before uh, there's people out there who would like to uh, support features or whatever and uh, spend some money in order to get what they need with modic and also we, have, we don't have anything yet there however as you said we do have the blog post that says hey this is how we're starting right now. We have a little budget to spend. Every team gets a little bit of it. We have m uh, something in GitHub that works. And um, so we get going, mm -hmm. make our experiences, make sure that we're not um, uh, hindering re regular contribution in open source because th that's a little bit of a conflict. Oh, yeah. And um, But we do want to get going and, and learn. And because this is a tricky thing mm -hmm. um, and a, a lot of things to talk about, uh, I would love to have an interview maybe in the next show or Ooh. the one after yeah, um, and discuss this in all depth because it is so important for Mordic and uh, such a big potential. And, and I'm really happy to see movement. Yeah, same. Good. So then we do have a date for Modicon. Oh, when <laughs> yeah. is it? When is it? I'm not telling yet. No, no. I can't tell. <laughs> um, the last Modicon is not too long ago. That mm -hmm. was in November. We are recording this in, in the mid of February, 15th to be exact. Um, and uh, the fixed date for Modicon is now the 16th and 17th of June oh. this year. So pretty soon only yeah. six months after the last modicon june is going to be another global virtual thing uh, it's going to be two days this time because one day of i don't know like 17 hours or so that <laughs> was pretty Eight. tough on some oh, yeah. um, um, and uh, so we want to spread it across two days mm -hmm. still want to move around the, the hours so we we can target different time zones around the world yep. also have multi-language tracks of course as we you know even better than we had before oh. <laughs> um so we we think it's going going to be real good mm -hmm. the last one was a blast um oh, maybe we can repeat that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's, it's also going to be a training day the day before that would be the 15th and um Again, this is this is online, so that's for everybody. Um, we had a lot of discussion with, and that started immediately after the last Modicon, how great it is to have an online thing, but on the other hand, how much we all miss, miss the, the physical event, the real meeting up with people, um, having side conversations, uh, spending some time over dinner or at the bar or whatever, and I help making the teams much deeper than they were before <laughs> and not only teams but also network for every for everyone networking is such an important aspect of a conference so uh, long story short we are doing this global event and we are going to do it every year going forward on the at the same time um, we also want the physical thing so we want to 
move the physical event to Q4, mm -hmm. something like November, maybe. We'll see. Um, and that's not a global Mordic conference. It's going to be a continental, whatever, uh, per continent thing. And it's maybe this time we're going to start in, in the US or in Europe. And then next year it's going to be maybe, oh, I don't know, Mordicon uh, Asia, yep. um, what have you. Um, and then, then the next continent. So, so it's, it's one for now. It's one virtual global thing. It is one per con. It, it one in a continent yep. per year. Uh, Q four is the date. Of course, there's a pretty good chance that we will have to cancel it in 2021 because we all don't know how things are going to develop. True. But uh, we are now hard at work in, at. Um, preparing the virtual Morticon and uh, we're going to release the official date announcement and, and the requests for papers and the sponsorships options and all that real soon, maybe before this podcast, podcast airs. <laughs> um, and at the same time, we are looking for a date and venue for the Q4 Morticon um, optional yep, thing. Hopefully. Yeah. And then the last, th last thing I have to add is that the official name is no longer Morticon. It's not. Yeah, there's a little bit of name conflict for in the Spanish language mm -hmm. where it has a little bit of bad sound. Oh. <laughs> so it is just the Mordic conference going forward. There will be places where Morticon is still used. And then, well, I think people will still call it Morticon and that's okay. But in official communication, it's going to be Mordic conference okay. and um, yeah that's not going to be an issue yeah. good I think we covered it all I think good. so too okay then in that case uh, we are appreciating all your feedback uh, please let us know what you think what you wish for and, and uh, what you hated and all that yeah. and uh, other than that uh, stay safe I'm looking forward to listen to you no, to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.